this segment, we're going to go over how to couple these two machines together using a timing belt. First things first, we have to open the access doors to both compartments. You'll notice that this particular device does not come equipped with a set of what we call idler bearings. The squirrel cage induction motor has idler bearings. What we're going to do is we're going to pass the belt through onto the pulley of the electrodynamometer in this case, onto the pulley of my squirrel cage induction motor, but you'll notice I've got a little bit of slack here in the belt. This is something we want to avoid and that's why we have these bearings. What we'll do is we'll place one side of the belt on the bottom bearing and then we're going to lift up the bearing because it's under spring tension and we're going to kind of pinch the belt in between. So this is what we're looking for. Now I'm going to rotate this about 90 degrees and we're going to take uh, a different view what I want to demonstrate, and this is a common problem, is people just put the belt on, they run the machine, and the belt keeps slipping off. We're going to go over the causes why this happens. Here, we can see that these two pulleys are not what we would call coplanar. They're not properly aligned. And if we were to run the squirrel cage induction motor, this would be the common issue as to why the belts are falling off the pulley is because they're not in perfect alignment. They have to be coplanar. Now, it has happened where some of the machines, there's a set screw that works itself loose and that we need to take the time to adjust them. So an immediate action for a student that is running into an issue where the belt is not staying on the machine, the most probable cause is that the two pulleys are not coplanar. We're going to apply power and we're going to run the three phase squirrel cage induction motor with the pulleys not properly aligned and we're going to see the effect. Here goes. We saw what happens when we run the squirrel cage induction motor with the pulleys misaligned, the belt pops off if you were to run the machine in a continued manner like this, what will happen is as you add load with the electrodynamometer, the belt is going to start skipping on the pulleys. You're going to have the machines banging together. Overall, it's not an ideal situation, one we would hopefully try to avoid in our labs. Taking a shot with the belts removed to show the amount of misalignment within these pulleys. I'm using a piece of metal as a straight edge or a guide and when I place the straight edge here making sure that it contacts both sides of this pulley you can see that there's a prominent gap at this end. This is meant to really underscore how much there's a misalignment in these pulleys. The remedy, we will actually grab an allen key and we will loosen off the set screws at both locations here on the shaft push this pulley back and get them properly aligned. First step, we'll grab an Allen key. Loosen the grub screws and right now we're just going to gauge how much pulleys need to be aligned. Now if I push this in, so if both sides of this pulley are in contact with the bar and both sides are in contact with the bar at this end, these pulleys are now considered to be aligned and I would simply just tighten up the Allen key. to ensure that any future project that I undertake using this combination of electrodynamometer 
and squirrel cage induction motor will run smoothly. Now that we've taken the time to properly align our pulleys, making sure that they're both coplanar, I'm going to turn on the power supply and we're going to run the machine and see if our belt is tracking better. Here we go. And as you can see, our belt is staying exactly where it should be, riding between those two idler pulleys, maintaining tension, and this is going to operate for us extremely well. Until next time, stay safe.